Hey everybody, and welcome back to Koali Zoo. It's one day later, but uh, there's a good little explanation for that. We will do in a second. But first of all, say hi to Mr. N7, also known as Mike Sheets. Hey guys, I'm still here. Yeah, that's great. And also <laughs> Mr. Silverred Aka Sylph is here. Hello everybody. Unfortunately, we are missing out on the lady. She is also not feeling very well. Um, seems to be in Europe at the moment a little bit with uh, food and stuff, <laughs> a little bit <laughs> problematic. Um, but yeah, uh, so we hope that she's feeling uh, way better soon and um, hope to have her here again next week. But um, yeah, we are back in and um, we are building a lost temple today um, with a lot of things. And also, um, I have to say before we, <laughs> before we yeah, start Yeah, I was about to say, about aren't it. you forgetting something here? <laughs> <laughs> hmm, uh, a minor yeah, well, detail. Yeah, so we are one day late, <clears throat> and um, the thing is, uh, I actually have been to the hospital this night with my wife together, um, because um, it seems we have been to a restaurant where, um, yeah, well, the food was not maybe that well, or maybe the drinks, we don't really know, but end of the day was um, that we had a little bit of a food poisoning, which wasn't that great, and so, um, yeah, we weren't able to record because, well, basically, I had no microphone in the hospital. <laughs> so basically, that would have been interesting, honestly. Having a... <laughs> I bet you'd hear a lot of beeps and stuff in the background <laughs> if we tried doing yeah. that. No, in in all honesty, it was not a great night at all. So I'm really happy that I'm feeling a bit better now and we can do the recording. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it will take a few more days to really be back at 100%. Can I just say, uh, Rudy, I really admire your your perseverance, I guess, because I do remember last night getting a message somewhere along the lines of, guys, we might not be able to do the recording. I just had to puke three times in a <laughs> row and I'm feeling terrible. But how about we try in 30 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that as well. I'm like, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, all right, I'm canceling my plans because that's never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I think even if you were to puke, um, you still would need like an hour of recovery time to get back to normal. The thing right. is, yeah, that's true. But the thing is, you <laughs> for whatever reason you feel so much better afterwards. Oh, so in a much second. better, yeah. It's insane. You're like, okay, that's gonna work, and then well, it didn't. <laughs> All right, so we'll put that off to the um, side. Now we're working on the lost temple. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So a lost temple. <laughs> Yeah, so the whole preparation went in now for the story of Rudy being uh, in the hospital and, well, anyways. So <laughs> we are actually getting to the heart, the core of, of today's episode, and that is the Lost Temple. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the main idea was to, to get in with, um, yeah, even more Indonesian uh, tradition, Indonesian architecture, and basically, you know, you cannot avoid having a temple in here. And it also follows the idea that we said this whole zoo is, is not a planned out zoo from the get-go. It's really using what has already been there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and has been turned into a zoo. So the idea was to have a temple that also um, incorporates uh, some kind of, in, you know, this kind of excavation uh, centers, which has been repurposed as well. So yeah, that's the basic idea about it. The way these pieces come together is just amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like they're not, they're not all this East Asian stone, but all of the textures, all the colors work together. Yeah, just like yeah. how far you have to stretch these pieces to actually make them look like stone, because... And many of them are completely different textures and items altogether. Mm -hmm. That's true. So what I did actually is, um, in terms of coloring them, I went in and uh, choose some of the stone textures and I put the pieces on top of the stone and try to blend them in as much as I uh, could. So I really was trying to get the color exactly like the stone color. Right. And that's how I, uh, that's how I found the right color um, to be used. It's a somewhat kind of a gray, greenish tone. Mm -hmm. I was a bit surprised. I never came up with this myself. Like, really, if I would have gone for it, mine had been a lot more bluish tint to it. But in fact, there was a lot more green in there. Right. And I guess it must be tough also to find textures that most closely oh, resemble, yeah. resemble the stone and mm -hmm. to find recolorable pieces in general. It's also quite a challenge. <laughs> yeah. So what I did, basically, um, I, I remember we talked about this earlier already. Um, I, I used to do some kind of blueprint stuff for me lately. Like I really built like a little palette of potential pieces I could use. Mm -hmm. And I'm just throwing them down as if you just 
you, you make a painting, for example, mm -hmm. and you have a palette of colors you slap down onto your board that you're gonna use. And this is actually how I tackled this as well. I was using a lot of pieces that I figured could potentially be good, and then I just slapped them all down and recolored them, and I was, you know, just uh, picking all these pieces and trying if they do work the way I wanted it. So, I kind of yeah, think that's the smartest it, way to do it because if you if you have a palette you're working from, you can still pull things in over time, but at least you've got a baseline. I do the yeah, same thing exactly, when I'm trying yeah. to develop a new uh, plant palette or a new climate palette or something like that. Yeah, true. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, one, one point over here, um, and since I just see how I'm positioning again that building, mm -hmm. um, I have to say that this building is facing exactly the entrance of our zoo. So I, I kind of um, made the orienta orientation work in a way that um, the little pathway, which you will see in a second coming out of this main gate, is facing exactly the main gate of our zoo. Mm, very cool. So a little bit of a special Sight thing. Sightlines. So would you say it's, uh, exactly. it's a little bit of a weenie then? <laughs> Sorry, I had to say it. People are waiting. On <laughs> yeah, I was just probably. waiting for it. The thing but is, it's is. not a weenie though, because it, it when because I've actually been in the zoo um, mm -hmm. or in this park file, and it kind of disappears. I was about to say so. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, 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 I think it is a weenie if you stand on top here, but you don't really see it that much because I try to work it in, so it really disappears. As I said, uh, it blends in with the background of this map mm -hmm. because it really is the same color as the mountains in the backside but I also used at the end a lot of foliage to blend it in um, quite nicely and I work a lot with uh, different heights and terrain slopes there to make it all not look as high and tall over mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. I think I worked out pretty well yeah and I actually like that it's more sort of like hidden in in, in the foliage of mm -hmm. the park which I I think, but I've never actually been to Indonesia, but which I, I think from what I can tell from pictures of temples like these, they also kind of do in real life. They're never, you know, like a Disney castle type of weenie. Right. And I'm actually going to no, say the that the foliage is, is almost too light um, in this area when we get all said and done. Um, I think densing it up is going gonna, is gonna to make it feel even more organic and kind of old. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, that could be a thing. Yes, I, I was trying to be a bit more careful at the beginning with the <laughs> foliage, um, also because of the animals, uh, because oh. I got a lot of clipping and stuff right. with them and climbing the and stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Forgot mm, about Planet Botanic. the animals. <laughs> I mean, it's just a minor thing in a zoo game. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is it really a zoo game? I feel like it's more of like a safari game or a, or a natural spaces game. Uh, to be oh, fair, you can very well take it into that as well. <laughs> True, yeah. You you could also do just a whole series about making a botanical garden or something. <laughs> you could. <laughs> Some Somehow oh, people God. actually want to watch, so it's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I guess I remember also that especially Sylph did a lot of stuff in Planet Coaster, which was really not related to Coasters itself. Yeah. For example, a skiing resort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, at the end of the day, I guess games like this are really just a vehicle for creative expression. And mm -hmm. I mean, you can do pretty much anything you like, at least on a, a physical aesthetic kind of level. So yeah, I'm all for people being really creative with what they do with the game. Oh, by the way, one thing I just uh, popped into my mind because I totally forgot to mention that I was pretty surprised by the fact that uh, the staff members later on in this build, they will use this stair over here. Like they could easily go also above the terrain. Oh, really? They seem to favor the stair, which makes me wonder if there is a certain pathfinding system that the staff is kind of preferring actual scenery pieces as kind of uh, traversable stuff. Because I was super surprised why they do it. Hmm. it. It was a bit of a crazy thing. Might be might be just coincidence here, but um, yeah, it just. I think it's probably because you have the the shallowest slope here, so the yeah. that could be yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. Well, unfortunately, but that's really cool, though. the staff is that's... pretty dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> well, then are. we might just want to educate them a bit. Oh, God, that was the, the <laughs> that's the Good worst segue, segue I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still sick. I'm excused. No, yeah, no, it's totally fine. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, um, have you seen that little bit over here? I called this P. Planko Archer. 
I, I mean, I, <laughs> Ooh, I yeah. needed a reference, so that's the name now of our caretaker. It's the Planko Archer. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a little, you can search in for the zoo now. Um, also, oh, I wanted to mention that um, I at the end, I think it's not, no, it's it's definitely not in the uh, time lapse. But in the end, I renamed every staff member that is uh, put into that area. I made all the um, work zones already um, mm. that they work and stuff like that. And I renamed those people um, with these, uh, you know, some funny names, but so we know where they belong. <laughs> However, one of them is called Tedget Camp, but that's another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we are working on the most freaking tedious build I believe I've ever done in Planet Zoo. It was a freaking pain to do, um, <laughs> but I, I think it was worth it. So, yeah, I found some reference images of some really cool um, circular buildings of. Uh, I think it was semi. Indonesian Dutch kind of architecture. It was a little bit of a blend between those things. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks super awesome, uh, but I wanted to repurpose that a little bit. So it's not entirely the circular one. I just do this because it makes the whole thing easier at the end. Um, but I wanted to have this in as a little education center where you have on um, the upper level, there is actually a big screen, a seating area where you could have potentially some kind of guide mm -hmm. who's going to explain something uh, about the orangutans and also Komodo dragons, which are on the other side here. Mm -hmm. um, and if you go down, you have a wonderful little um, viewing gallery, which um, is facing into this building where there's actually the, um, yeah, as you can see over here, that's the uh, where they can sleep and stuff. It's mm -hmm. their shelter. And then can, they can also look into this little shallow area because um, from the upper level, I made it that way so the people cannot look into that area. I wanted to give these animals a bit more privacy. Mm -hmm. So I arranged this so that the people cannot look into the lower part of that area where all the climbing stuff will be. They can only see the temple and stuff. To really actually see the animals, they have to go in here and uh, use the one-sided okay. glass to make sure that there is I some gotcha. privacy going on. No, I wasn't, that makes sense. wasn't following you there initially, but then I'm like, okay, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, so, yeah, it was really yeah, a struggle now. I, I mean, you guys know the past. <laughs> yep. You guys know. <laughs> what I really like about yep. this building, when you actually walk in it and stuff like that, it feels like it expands and it just keeps getting cooler and cooler as you, you go down the staircase and then you're, oh, you're actually in, like, two different viewing areas. It's very smartly set up. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm really happy it turned out the way it turned out in the end, but I can tell you, I... I suffered a lot during this build. <laughs> I, I, I think it's the third or fourth footage I'm using over here. Oh, um, God. Oh, my because gosh. Because I, I had some really, really great issues with... Um, uh, first of all, I was not really happy with how the path was laid out. Mm -hmm. So I changed the pathing path a few times until it really worked the way it is. And then, I mean, the, those plaster pieces over here, I feel like these are the most usable pieces in the game at this point. Totally. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, it's just insane. Um, I think this is where a lot of people use the backside of windows in Planet uh, Coaster. And then <laughs> Frontier was like, maybe we should provide something like that. That was nice. Yeah, exactly. Nice that they did that. I mean, if, if they had made the plaster piece with no recolorability, I don't know. There'd be fires, there'd be riots. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, they are so versatile, which is great. Um, and you can really find the right colors and stuff. But... They are also very um, sensitive when it comes to the blending. Mm -hmm. Like if you move them ever so slightly, you really do have this ugly cut in there already. And to make this, you know, get rid of the Z fighting, but yet make it look clean. Oh, that was a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> Such a struggle. But yeah, at the end, I think it was really worth it because I love the moment when you get into the center and you really have the looks of, of how it turns out to be looking. I, I really like that. It's really cool. It really gives you this this educational vibe. And yeah, I, I believe it could work like that. So it, it I think it's totally believable the way it's set up now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so quite a lot of work uh, that went in here. I think you're teasing people very much about what it's going to look like eventually while we're still looking at a very... <laughs> unfinished version of it <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah oh this is also by the way this is um now one of the first variants of the seating area which won't make it uh, to the end um oh. uh, this will be scrapped out as you can see <laughs> there we yeah, go yeah it was sad it was sad that the actual like theater seating didn't make it in yeah i i just i didn't feel it um because <laughs> the, at the end it looked really good everything in there looked really detailed mm -hmm. 
but these benches kind of went back to let's say early planko days mm -hmm. where you don't have that many small pieces and they felt a little bit out of place mm -hmm. Like this bare bone setting was really great for them at the beginning, but the more detail I put in, the less good they looked. Right. And so I decided to go for something else. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, so this is now going to be this big screen over here. Oh, may I just take this opportunity to talk about the screens? Absolutely mm -hmm. not. So f f <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Okay, then carry on, please. <laughs> no, just, oh, God. So Frontier, if Frontier is listening, I really hope you guys do. I just have a question. So, why the hell do we only have one size of screen? <laughs> oh, yeah. And why the hell can we not use it as a billboard? That's a good question. These two things are in my mind the whole time when I was building that. I was just like, how cool would that be to make like a really great photo of this area mm -hmm. and put that on this screen? To Wouldn't be fair... Be cool? About the first question, and I think you're, you're totally right, by the way, but I think in real life situations, big screens like this are also often like multiple monitors connected to each other mm -hmm. uh, to like sh show the same piece of media. But yeah, you're, you're totally right. <laughs> yeah, I was also like, um, also the other thing is we have this little exhibit um, education board, you know. Mm -hmm. I also question myself, why can we only use that for exhibition, uh, for, for these small exhibits and not like both for both? I mean... Anyways, this was something I was really like, oh God, I would love to use them here because they look so good. Like the pieces themselves, they look so good. I have even these little um, billboards in there, but you know, I couldn't use them because what else would I put on? So that's, ah, I don't know. It would be so cool if, if that would be a thing, but yeah. Now in this little education area, um, you've, got the, you've got the screen like on the other side of a staircase would there be anybody that actually goes on the the back side there or is it just for yeah. access it's actually ex uh, only for access and i had okay. a little gate in there to be honest um i have to say in the second iteration i forgot about it so all right we're moving on to the komodo building <laughs> <laughs> no just to finish that point i had this gate in um, with the other uh, with the other fence pieces I used earlier to mm -hmm. really provide a little backstage access, uh, I simply forgot about putting in a second one. So that might be added in the future then. Gotcha. Uh, because yeah, the idea is just for maintenance reasons to get behind there and and connect the cables again if there's something not working or yeah, right. look for the Wi-Fi, whatever. Cool. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, now we are getting into the um, backstage building or Komodo Dragon building, if you will. You've built so many things for this so one episode. So many things. God. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I wanted to call it a day after the uh, exhibition thing, but I felt like, oh no, I just cannot leave that open there. It's like so bare bone and <laughs> uh, I don't know. And I was just like, okay, let's see if we get some more um, stuff in here. And I have to say, this building was pretty simple. You will see that also now from the time lapse. It, you know, I was... I think playing for a few hours already mm -hmm. and I was really in a good flow and I was like okay this is going to work out. Was this, this one of those like 3 a.m. Planet Zoo sessions yes, that you're always exactly. having? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I see that. And so I figured okay this is this is pretty easy um, and I was happy with the first iteration of this build like really I was pretty happy with the uh, style. Um, I used another little building I found uh, in, in some inspiration images on Google and I, I took most parts of it because I, I love this little, um, yeah, the roof is somewhat tilted um, in, in, a, in a circular shape, mm -hmm. but um, still looks pretty cool because on the one side it's so completely, completely scratched. It's like f totally flat oh, all cool. of a sudden. And then it works down the way on the, on the roof um, kind of nicely though. Uh, but I, I just like the looks of it and I felt like it fits in here it fits in that area and it makes up for a believable addition to this area because it's not too off in terms of architecture mm -hmm. yeah and i also like so, how yeah. it's slightly different like a, a kind of thing that could be added later on um, exactly yeah so it, it adds some organic flow to the layout as well yeah that was the idea basically also to uh, make this work and yeah then the tedious indoors <laughs> connection <laughs> oh god gone. yeah yeah when you make a round building suddenly every wall is round on the inside mm -hmm. as well <laughs> kind of sucks <laughs> that's true yeah you know what the whole education building kind of made me realize it you've gone so much into like detail when it comes to these realistic modern additions and especially interior decorating you could almost build a realistic 
office building in Planet Zoo and like give mm-hmm. an actual interior as well. Mm-hmm. I don't know. The, the whole thing just looked really realistic and convincing. And I just sort of thought of that. That's a that's a really random thought, but no, you're totally right. Um, and also, have to say, the indoor lighting is really great oh, in this yeah. game, mm-hmm. and uh, that also helps um, with with this selling this idea. It really does help. Yeah, so, it's a big step up yeah. from Planet Coaster for sure. Oh yeah. But yeah, we are nearly done already with this building. I um, yeah, I left the detailing on the roof a little bit simpler than what I did before, just to make sure that this building is not going over the top again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, but it will also get a little backstage access, um, which connects to the main road that you have laid out, Sylph, at the beginning mm-hmm. of the very first episode. So this is also this whole area can be accessed by um, from out of the zoo. Which oh, I that's thought really was also cool. a cool idea. This is the coolest area. This, these yeah, this I you. love the terraforming. Oh no! <laughs> we're no, no, we're on. getting there. We are getting there. We are getting oh, okay, there. Okay, okay, okay. God, I felt so teased for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we are getting there. As I said, oh, so I we were actually move. spoiled for a second. Yes. <laughs> yes Everything's um, out of phase. <laughs> <laughs> what is this like? Pop fiction. Everything is like <laughs> slightly different order. Uh, to be honest, um, I like this might be one of my weirdest things. I never build in order. Um, I build wherever I feel like I, I can go now. Mm-hmm. And so this is I, I just rearranged all the footage now that it makes sense in terms of a um, yeah of a story. Mm-hmm. And, okay. and so I, but it's not the way I built. It's not the way I built. No creativity is uh, not so, linear. Yeah, so I kind of uh, had this in already because basically, as you can see, now this piece over here is built. And while you see the footage in the background, the backstage building is not done yet. So, uh, but I made the, like, I kind of built this uh, little planter section first. And then I was like, okay, before I go on, let's build just first of all this backstage building because I do have this idea right now. So I need to do it now. So that's how it went. I feel sorry for the poor sap that has to take care of this. uh (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah it's pretty dangerous <laughs> ah we are back into safety reasons again. Okay. <laughs> uh, is this ada compliant hmm. nope <laughs> oh god uh, yeah no um honestly i just went for the looks here totally yeah and this is, this is what i meant earlier with the um area that helps to cover up this lower area for the animals Mm -hmm. so this is really what i made to make sure that you cannot see them Ah, from the upper level very clever so yeah you have all those overhangs so that you cannot see anything exactly interesting but i also just love the general flow of the whole look of this thing the way that these things curve out from the dome and almost kind of draw you toward into this whole area i think if you're coming uh from the perspective of the paths, it looks really cool. Mm-hmm. That's why I really feel like we need a sky trail so you can see some of this detail from above because it gets lost um, from the yeah. view. Um, honestly, because you asked already for that N7, I, I really felt already that you <laughs> that you had this idea in mind when you were asking if it's done or not. And <laughs> honestly, uh, sky trail, or at least like a, um, a platform, was already on my list as well, but I just, mm. okay, I, I needed to call it a day at some point. <laughs> yes. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're like sitting at your computer foaming at the mouth at 5 a.m. Like, oh, what one more I planter. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it comes down to, doesn't it? The, the 2 a.m. Yeah. Uh, plan zoo build is that you, you're like, okay, just one more thing. I can just do one more thing, and then it's 2.30. Just, one, just, more just one more spire. Just one more thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. exactly. No, so yeah, if, if you, you feel free to add whatever you want, because this I think from this area on, you can you can really go on into some more stuff uh, i basically left the whole back side of this little mountain mm-hmm. completely open so you can do whatever you want there cool. and also um, with all the um plans i put in for the climbing area for the orangutans you can also build some stuff there mm-hmm. um so there's still a lot space given that can be used in this area well that's the thing i mean i want to get people in there some some way some safe way that the you know the orangutans are are happy too but there there's so much of that temple that you can't access Mm. And if this was an excavation, then people would have to somehow be able to traverse it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. So may- maybe maybe we could work in some kind of uh, how is this even called in English? Um, when they have these supports, you know, they they build all these supports around the building oh, uh-huh. um, to make sure that the temple is not going to break down. Yeah, scaffolding. scaffolds. Could, yeah, yeah, scaffold. Exactly. That could be a thing. Very cool. 
Yeah, it's an interesting thing to consider as a scenery piece. Also, side note, I'm very glad we just saw the little dome being put on top of the education center because that thing was on my mind for a bit. And I was like, wait a second, where did that come from? Yeah, wait, there's something but, uh, missing here. <laughs> yeah, chronological order. <laughs> it was actually a little bit of a pain to slap that together in a way that it worked because I was like, what the hell was I doing? Mm -hmm. Why am I going on with that now? So yeah, but yeah. yeah. You can see after the little teasing, we are now actually in um, the kind of foliage work here. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, again, I, I cut out a lot because I changed my mind a few times uh, to, to what I wanted to do. And I think I, I really, like, I barely ever put that many thoughts into putting down every little plant. I really changed the planting mm -hmm. kind of 10 times, it feels almost like, because I wanted to get it right in a way that, you know, we, we still maintain a certain view mm -hmm. towards the temple, but still make it a little bit hidden away and at the same time make it look colorful, but yet not too colorful. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of kind of different iterations went in there until I was happy with it, which is basically this version over here. Very cool. Yeah. And um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Talking about roundish uh, buildings again, um, <laughs> this entrance thing over here was also... It looks fairly simple now as I did this, but again, I think I made also three or two versions of it until I was happy. Mm -hmm. So this is the this is the final version where I, I went in with a little more easy architectural style, but I just want to have something that, um, okay, so the idea was that this pathway is leading in kind of straight mm -hmm. and I wanted to make sure that this entrance has a certain straight welcoming element mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. doesn't feel too off because you're not running into a round Yeah, wall, it doesn't you know? just feel like a li little random hole in a big exactly. round yeah. building. Hmm. And so, yeah, I was figuring if I could put down this education board somewhere. I can already tell, nope, it's going <laughs> to go away. Um, <laughs> it's, I don't know, I, I, yeah. I didn't feel that one as well because, again, you have such a such a great opportunity to put some stuff on, but yet there are only these kind of 10-ish, 15-ish uh, different topics you can put on there. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing really I felt related to this area. So I went in uh, with this education board over here. I made a few days ago, actually, uh, because this is a bit more versatile. Oh, yeah. And now we are at... Oh, God. <laughs> Let me tell this. I, I don't know if you've seen that, but this little area over there, the orangutans always could just walk through that mirror, uh, this this window. I still don't know why. I still have no clue why they do this. So I needed to use all the hitboxes of the freaking rocks to make sure that this works. <laughs> I don't know. This is incredibly clever too. I'm definitely gonna be yeah, seeing I this. Yeah, I love the railing. God. Oh yeah, good old Planko trick here. Mm -hmm. I was super, I was super mad that you couldn't go up and down with the boat because, I mean, obviously you cannot. But um, so I could only use it over here as a straight fence, and on the other hand side, could oh, it, use it. It's not going up at no. that point. Nope. Oh. Boo. It blends in kind of nicely because it has such a, a thick footer, mm -hmm. and so it blends nicely and it goes up and down a little bit, so that's fine. But uh, since the boat ride is obviously always flat Darn. down to the bottom. <laughs> Um, sense, yeah, I tried but... it also with the train because you can rotate the train um, uh, rails a little bit, but not enough, unfortunately. <laughs> and the other rails don't really work that well. And honestly, I was just going mad for a second because I wanted to deactivate the um, coaster restrictions mm -hmm. in the menu until I found there are none. So <laughs> <laughs> obviously, uh, no, we don't. Yeah. We don't have any RMC uh, RMC pieces to, to nope, make fences out of. Not. Unfortunately not. But yeah, we are now um, hitting, actually there's a lot, uh, yeah, five more minutes in the uh, footage left. But honestly, this shows how much detailing went in there in the end. You can see there was a whole cut already. You can see there's already uh, on the left-hand side a lot more forest mm -hmm. for the animals. And yeah, I was just finishing off um, these areas. And I have to say, like one thing that always drives me mad in, in Planet Zoo also in Planet Coaster back then once you start to make every single area between pathways very detailed, mm -hmm. you have to do it with all of them mm -hmm. because otherwise it looks so dull. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was like getting mad at me because I started it and I was like, okay, <laughs> you cannot always use the stone. You cannot always use that. It looks so weird. And I was like, okay, you have to find something else and so on and so forth. So I was using so many different pieces to make sure that everything blends in as nicely as the rest. God. Yeah, that's what that takes just, most time is not developing yeah. the idea but actually executing the whole thing. 
So this yeah, this yeah. temple that you have here is this supposed to be like a plaster replica? Yeah, it's a good point though. I was thinking if at this point it makes sense to call it that way. I the initial idea was to work with a real temple, mm -hmm. but I almost feel like you wouldn't open that for a zoo. No. Right. So I think it could be a replica. I think to it's educate people also about it. Interesting. Um, I was really reminded, and I kind of wish I said this earlier, uh, by the Indonesian era, uh, area in the Belgian zoo, Paide Daisa, mm -hmm. uh, which has an Indonesian era with buildings very much like this. Okay. And I'm kind of kicking myself right now for not bringing this up earlier. Um, but <laughs> I, I will soon. And if you're watching this uh, and wondering what it looks like, definitely look it up. Uh, it's called Paide Daisa. And it has some really beautiful scenery and the Indonesian era also has these kind of stone temples and apparently they brought over people from like the countries which they make the scenery of and they brought over these old Indonesian bricks as well to build what they built. So even though okay. it's kind of, you know, it's not entirely real, it's not an original real temple, mm -hmm. they use similar materials and kind of bring over the same kind of knowledge. Mm. Um, and with this, you know, it's still being in Indonesia, but being a zoo, I, I figured they might have done something similar, you know, try and recreate it as accurately as possible, but it might not, you know, be a real old ancient temple. Interesting. So maybe instead we can just have tours, guided tours of the ruins so that, mm -hmm. you know, you have just a small amount of people that are in the same exhibit as the, the animals and they still kind of have their, their safe areas, like you can't walk this way. But then have maybe a raised platform or something like that where you can look down on the ruins or something. Mm -hmm. Something that's that's not going to take away from the scale of the ruins, but still allows people in different vantage points too. Right. Yep. Yep. Totally agree. Cool. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the beauty of, of these collaboration works, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that everyone has some different knowledge and different ideas and different inspirations. And so you can really work out the best of it. And I really feel like, the, you know, talking about what you have in, in the zoo, you just mentioned Sylph and, and also the idea with the sky trail and stuff. I really think we can make this a believable part of the zoo mm -hmm. without making it feel too forced in as a real temple or whatnot. Oh, sure. mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Yeah, totally. And now, yeah, now this is the, uh, <laughs> what I just was talking about, uh, trying to make this area usable for the animals. <laughs> ah, God, ah, yeah, that's always, always the same. But yeah, in the end, they can use it. And that's what's making me happy. Okay, they can happy use it. <laughs> I think, yeah, they, yeah, they have can. they used it is the question. Uh, this area over here, they have used. Yes. Okay. What they haven't used yet is the temple area. But as I said, I believe this is mostly because they... Um, they basically have to go there once to figure out that this area has something in them uh, in there mm. for them and then they go there oh interesting i like the so, i yeah. like the ruining that's happening this is awesome yeah i just wanted to i i just didn't want to overdo it just a little bit mm -hmm. um so that it sells the idea and then i just put some platforms in because i figured especially the orangutans they need to have those platforms mm -hmm. to use it because otherwise i mean they're quite big and so that's why and they do it. Do you have bedding elsewhere or is it only up in the uh, the temple? No, we have also down in the building is also bedding. I think the easiest way to get them to use the temple is just get rid of the bedding, uh, except yeah, for I guess so. in the temple. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it's kind of cruel. That might be but... a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can always do it that it's way. How you, you know. exploit things, right? <laughs> so we've learned how to exploit <laughs> yeah. peeps in Planet Coaster and we're learning how to exploit animals exactly. in Planet Zoo. Exactly. Well, that's a good Woo. point to end the time lapse because now Ooh. we are jumping over into the real time part. All right. Alrighty. So here we are now in the real time part, guys. Um, yeah, Mike and Sylv are seeing my stuff now. Screen share to them. I hope you guys can see it uh, good mm -hmm. enough. Pretty clean. Yeah, yeah. looks can. good. Awesome. Okay, so this one over here is the view into the temple area from this little lake we made at the very ending of the time lapse. Mm -hmm. um, you can see those two dragon-ish figures, I guess, holding each other's hands as as some kind of uh, introduction on the on the little mountain thing over here. It's not a mountain; That's it's really just cool. a little hill of rocks. But yeah, it's very wholesome. Um, <laughs> and then in the back, you can see the temple with the little vines hanging down here. But yeah, as we approach, we can actually hit play for a second. And as we approach the area, let me just zoom out a bit here. Um, this is the little 
a square before you get into a little plaza. Mm -hmm. And to the right hand side, you would then go to have a look into the Komodo dragon area mm -hmm. where we can see one sitting here and the other there. Um, and on the left hand side, as I said, you cannot really look down into this area. You see, this is all blocked away for you. Mm -hmm. So you, you naturally have your view focused here. Mm -hmm. Or oh, if really you look cool the left hand line. side, you just look into the back area where there's all the climbing going on. Nice. So this front area over here is really a privacy for the animals. It's also where I put the forage box over here, hidden away in. And uh, so, yeah, as we go a little bit further, yeah, I try to really make this all work together. You can actually also hear we used some rocks to block the view a little bit, as you can see. Mm -hmm. You cannot really look down too much. Every now and then you get a little peak, but not too much. And then we can go all the way down here, use the foliage also to block the views a bit more. And then we come into this back area, as I said, this is where potentially there is some space to work around with here. I just also put down a wall. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is really like, if, if you're approaching from this side, I also thought about making the side lengths work. So you get always a little peak here and there, not too much, but then you just need to go to the right. And if you go to the left, the whole view of the center opens up to you mm -hmm. with mm. the with the temple on the left hand side boom nice. there you go that's then when you have the first uh, view of this temple and it really is kind of selling the idea of really dragging you towards it <laughs> also we have this little bit over here to walk through i really um, i like that little i like this little example temple piece because it just yeah. feels like oh this is this is how the architecture of this region look like yeah exactly i love it and it's I have, also uh, something that sorry Piety Dyson no, no. does all the time, and I was really <laughs> reminded of it. You get all these little nooks and crannies to walk through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. I think that's still important that's in a zoo. Good. It was definitely important in, in a theme park, but I think that sometimes gets lost that, yeah, it, people are here for the animals, but they're also here to explore different uh, biomes yeah. and cultures. Right. And and this feels really immersive. Like, you don't really feel like you're looking at a, an, at a cage with animals mm -hmm. in it, and it really feels like you're getting a peek into their actual habitat. Yeah, it's really it. cool. Yeah, so gonna, it's, that's it. And I also, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that in the time lapse, but I have hidden in some bins and trash bins in there mm. uh, so that people really walk through the middle. It works, so I tested it, it works, even though they do kind of cramp together a bit there, but that's fine. Oh, yeah, if yeah we go, I see. If, if we go a bit closer to the building, you can see you're going a bit upwards and still this area down here is hidden away for you, mm -hmm. but you can still look a little bit more into the far back uh, where the animals are just thriving in their habitat. So yeah, cool. now we go into this build and uh, this is what I said, this is then the education center over here where you have these kind of seats where you can just sit down and, and watch one of the educational movies or again, that could be like a tour guide uh, or guide who's standing in here and explain something to you. So where parents so, yeah. will leave their kids, then, they're screaming kids. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's a good point. We're going to need playgrounds as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, anyway, yeah, that's true. Go on with that's the tour. True. That's true. No, that's absolutely true. I mean, that's important uh, because playgrounds. Mm. Uh, okay, yeah. Then we have this information kiosk over here with mm -hmm. the weirdly bearded guy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge. I just, wow. I, I just, honestly, I just watched ski jumping today because I couldn't mm -hmm. do anything else than watching TV. And they have a new helmet, which looks almost like that. They have <laughs> these kind of things to the left and right. It, does, to have it looks bitter. like it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That's okay. Funny. You know, you know, uh, are... Merry Christmas by Slade. C Merry Christmas, everybody, actually, mm -hmm. I should say. <laughs> the lead yeah. singer has a beard that looks very much like that. It, <laughs> it's just so true. Holiday times. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, if you go further to the left hand side, we have this next peek into the habitat. So there's also this little box over here where they can play. Mm -hmm. And no, I didn't want to put all these rocks in here intentionally. They are here, so the animals don't walk through here. I have no idea why, they but walk they do. Through the glass. They can yeah, they walk through the glass. I don't know why. Of course they, they just do. basically do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit so, unfortunate. Yeah. But um, it kind of sells the idea that maybe if they play with the thing, they don't look or they don't feel watched, you know, because mm. this one is one-sided glass and stuff. But yeah, I don't know. So if we go <clears throat> to the left-hand side here, this is a little peek into... Oh, look at that. This was planned. Oh, that's cool. Oh, nice. Hello there. So yeah, that's the idea. Basically, if you go in here, you have the Komodo Dragon um, viewing point and you can actually see it 
um, right over here. So that was intentional, <laughs> uh, intentionally this way. I, I asked this guy to be here. Hmm. No, that's funny though, that it's really in here, but exactly this way it should have worked. Um, if they want to get, uh, f you know, inside from the sun, this is where they go, this is the little shed, and then they can just go and run off into the habitat <laughs> as it does over here. What a perfect example. Oh. That was really cute. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Animals cooperating for once. Planet Zoo has really made me realize that, like, when TV directors are complaining about animals not cooperating, <laughs> I know these are digital animals, but getting yeah. them to do the stuff that you kind of want them to do on screen is really difficult. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That's so true. That's absolutely. Also in Planet Zoo, that's, yeah, well. Um, then we have this little staircase down. As I said, this was one of the things that drove me nuts while building it <laughs> to make it look clean and stuff. So yeah, we, we come down to this area and there is the entrance to the habitat actually. And on the left hand side you have another education board. You can sit down with some wall mounts here with some orangutan shapes. Cool. And then if you're down here, this is where you get the little peek into this uh, area, which is a bit more bare bone, but mm -hmm. intentionally, because that should be the looks of it. And then you can actually look into the backside of this habitat um, from over here. So, yeah, giving you just another peek into the habitat. So you have actually multiple viewing angles of that area. And honestly, the very private area of the animals to the right hand side over here is obviously not viewable, which is, mm -hmm. I think, also important because mm -hmm. they need their absolute privacy. Cool. privacy. Okay, now we just take the door over here, I would say, and just like run through here. And we just go up once to the temple so we can have a better peak of the temple. Hello, dude. <laughs> okay, so we go up here. And is there anyone using those things? No, there's just one playing with the ball over <laughs> there. No one up there. Because there are also some toys on these platforms. Anyways, um, yeah, if we take the stairs. See, oh, they're up here. Look at that. <laughs> that's cool. This dude came from here. So yeah, that's the temple area over here. Just the, the bear temple. And then if we go in here and turn around there, you can see what I just meant. There's mm -hmm. our entrance. Uh, oh, that's cool. That's cool, yeah. So this is the exact view of this area. Also, I fenced off this building a little bit to the left-hand side here. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you don't really look into the backstage too much. But yeah, that's basically uh, the little work I did. Wow. It's so. really cool. Uh, the temple complex is definitely my favorite part of it, though. Just the way that you manage to mm -hmm. somehow make these textures work. Uh, like this is, is really cool. Yeah, I'm really glad that you guys are liking it because it, oh God, it was such a pain to work with, but <laughs> it worked. The last little bit I wanted to show you is only this little backstage area over here. This is where the connection works, but yeah, that's that's then the end of it mm -hmm. um, where the immersion gets lost. But I think this is also fairly important. We have this backstage access, which connects to your road sylph from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And then you can, you know, go in here. We have a staff room, um, some some kind of uh, broken down facilities, as always. Did you want to keep and, the facilities? Since we don't oh, necessarily need them and no, none of the, the mechanics work on anything because... Uh, so what's what I'm finding is happening with like uh, turning off enrichment, or uh, not enrichment, but uh, welfare and stuff like that. So the staff will just will stop working. They'll stop feeding animals because the animals are always at 100%. Same thing, the, the zoo is always powered, the zoo is always you know, filtered. So mechanics don't do anything. You can see he's walking over there, but he's not actually fixing anything. Hmm. That's true, actually. Yeah, I, I, I do like, honestly, in my sandbox park, I also didn't turn this all off because I like them actually working in the zoo. Mm -hmm. um, because I, f I feel like this is really cool later on to sell the immersion. Like, instead of just having those, those dudes running around and doing nothing. I wonder if we have to kind of work with the tools a little bit and maybe not turn off animal welfare entirely so that people still continue to work. That they're, exactly, but the yeah. animals aren't, like, going into starving fits or something like that yeah yeah exactly i mean you can still still deactivate um death by starving uh, mm -hmm. starvation so that will help with it they will complain a lot but not die because so yeah i found fun. that the komodo dragons were like freaking out because they're starving but nobody is actually feeding anybody so the, the zookeeper yeah, will come in true, yeah. turn around and be like yeah, yeah they're fine <laughs> yeah and they say, yeah yeah well they're 100 <laughs> i see that it's fine <laughs> Alrighty, I think it's time to wrap it up. This is the whole, maybe we can just, okay, well, one last thing, because I felt <laughs> like we didn't have that peak mm -hmm. uh, of this building on the left-hand side here. Mm -hmm. uh, because also try to, here we go, 
There you go. So that this really makes up for one cohesive look. Yeah, I really, I really dig this this style. It's very, um, it's somewhere in between modern and traditional, and I yeah. can't, I can't really pinpoint what era this would have been built. Maybe eighties. Yeah, that could be yes, maybe late seventies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Early maybe 80s. even sixties. The the, mm. the dome itself is giving me definitely some sixties vibes as well. Yeah. 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 It has also some some small elements of Bauhaus in it. Mm -hmm. um, oh, of and... course, you Germans. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is Bauhaus. Of course it is. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. I think um, in terms of a decade, we have to see what the final decision is on, on when this has been built. But I cannot wait to see what we will do with it in the future. Maybe with a sky trail or, or like a raised platform to see how this works. Yeah, and, what, um, whatever we do, yeah. I really hope it preserves those temple views because that that sightline is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, All right, let's let's keep that for the end of this episode. Yeah, it needs to All be right, preserved. Guys, I'm super happy that we made it, and uh, thanks a lot for being in the recording with me. Yes, that Rudy is no still problem. alive. Yay! I'm still alive. <laughs> I, I still have some coke left with me. That's fine. I'm feeling not that bad. It's all good. Um, mm. Yeah. So I hope you guys liked it, and I really. I really hope that you guys out there also like this episode uh, with those three guys here um, <laughs> rambling about this build and, and talking about this, this weird stuff. Um, no, it was a pleasure. So uh, next week, did we finally decide on, on where the next episode will be? I think it's heading to me. It's uh, heading to you again. I, I guess. Um, <laughs> because none <laughs> of us are trusting that I'd be able to finish it on time. <laughs> So, I trust yeah. you. I just I don't think I the do lady too. does. <laughs> no, I don't trust myself with it either. <laughs> I'm traveling back to the Netherlands, and that means that I don't have my desktop PC, which planets which planets oh has. So yeah, you said you were only going to be working on it for maybe a day or something like that. Yeah, I only like I'd only have two days, and I don't think yeah. I could do anything like That's good enough work. with it. So. Okay, so the final decision is made now. Mm -hmm. we give it over yep. to Mr. <laughs> Mike again. Yep, back to me. <laughs> Please don't rip it all apart. Apart, Mike, please don't. <laughs> I am currently in the process of adding things, not ripping apart. Oh, that's good. That's <laughs> great. <laughs> oh, I cannot wait to see that. Cool. Guys, it was a pleasure. Yes. And no I really problem. hope to see you guys next week again, healthy and mm -hmm. happy ever after. Yes. Everybody <laughs> everybody romantic. needs to be healthy. And we'll be in the new year next uh, next week. Oh, true. Oh, yeah. well, this is the last episode. This is the last Koali episode of this decade. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, wow. Oh, that's oh, wow. also true. true. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. What a sentimental ending here. <laughs> All right, Quality Zoo is done. Oh, Let's uh, move on to the next project. <laughs> <laughs> we will be finished by the end of the next decade. Hopefully. All right. <laughs> so, see you guys. Have a good one and bye. See you guys. Bye, everybody. Bye.